Hey guys, welcome back to Sports Design School, where we teach you everything you need to know to create high quality sports designs in Adobe Photoshop. This week we're going over a graphic we received from one of our followers on Instagram, which by the way, we have an Instagram now, make sure you go follow. I'll leave the link down to that in the description. But a follower on Instagram DM'd us and said, hey, can you create this design right here? And so while we don't have the exact same elements of that design, I went through and created a similar design completely from scratch. And today I'm just gonna be walking through each of the elements of that design and breaking down what I did and why I did what I did. It's gonna be a little bit different than some of my other videos where I just create a new graphic from scratch. I'll just be walking through the graphic I created and talking about what I did and how the adjustment layers and things work to create the look that I have. So I'm just gonna start off by unselecting all of these layers and hiding them. And we're gonna to get to the very beginning of this document. Perfect. So I started off with this, well, I really just started off with this, which is an eight and a half by 11 background. Um, super simple, you just go into Photoshop, hit new document and type in eight and a half by 11 for your document proportions. If you wanna create this document alongside me. I then started by just dragging in this beach element. Now if you're wondering where you find um, high quality elements like this or kind of where you can find high resolution photos other than just going to Google Images. I always recommend these two sources. They're called Pexels and Unsplash. I'll go to those right now. So Pexels and Unsplash are great royalty free websites that you can go to find high resolution images. Um, anything, literally anything. I just typed in beach calm clouds and it came up with all these designs. All these are completely or all these photos are completely free to use and you can use them in whatever designs you'd like to. 100% uh, royalty free and they're all incredibly high quality so your designs don't look like they're all pixelated and things like that. So I definitely recommend checking out Pexels and Unsplash. I'll leave the link to them down in the description. It's completely free to use. But back to the design. So we started off with this background image layer and what I did pretty much from the beginning is I did two simple effects to it. I went through and added some motion blur and I added some noise and I'll tell you why I did each one of those. I added some motion blur to give it a more dynamic feel in my scene. Now I knew I was going to be adding a player to the scene and I wanted it to feel like the player was sprinting through the camera and a photo was taken and there's a little bit of blur from the movement of my player. So by adding a motion, adding motion blur, which you can do by just hitting filter, blur, motion blur, you're able to go through and add some of those motion blur lines. For instance, if you turn it all the way up to 406, you can see it creates this kind of look right here. Not exactly the look I'm going for, but similar. And then I also added noise. And the reason I did that is just really any real life photo has noise for the most part. It just makes it, for some reason, when you see noise in an image, it feels more real and less photoshopped. So I just added noise by going to filter, noise, and then add noise. And you can just adjust how much or how little you want. I just added four. Um, you don't want to go crazy with that because if you add a lot of it, it can get really terrible looking, like you can see. So next really is just the shadows to my image and then my Clay Thompson cutout. Now the shadows, what, what I did for these is, and I've shown this in a tutorial before, but I just type B to bring up my brush tool. I'm just gonna create a new layer for simplicity. And then I go to window, brush settings, and I squeeze my brush to make it more horizontal and more like an oval. And then I just make the size pretty small and then I turn my flow down pretty low. And that gives you better control over what your shadows actually look like. Um, 
So for this one, I just made my brush pretty small and I'll just do it right here so you can see. And you, you just have the ability to build up the shadow where you want it. And then for this second shadow to the right, that's just kind of the larger shadow, I made my brush bigger and then I just kind of did a little bit of a subtle shadow. Now you'll notice like if you were to turn your flow up to 100%, it does that right off the bat. But if you turn your flow down, it gives you the ability to have some really precise control with where your brush gets kind of densely populated, if that makes sense. So that's what I did for the shadow, both shadows for my design. I'm going to delete the layer I just created. I then dragged in my Clay Thompson cutout, which if you know how to do a cutout, it's super simple to do and I just dragged them into the design. And then I added a couple of effects to Clay um, to match him into the background a little bit better. Now I'll turn off all of these effects and we'll go through one by one so I can talk about each one of those. I added motion blur. Um, again, it's just like adding motion blur to the background. You just go up to filter, blur, and then motion blur. Just like we did in the background. And then I added noise. Again, just like we did in the background. Now the, the thing is, when you do motion blur, you'll notice that your cutout's face will also have blur on it. And that's kind of a little bit frustrating because it makes the image less clear and it doesn't look all that great. But when you have a special smart filter like that on your cutout, you're able to just go through and click on this white square right here and then tap B to bring up your brush tool. And I'm just gonna choose soft round brush for now. And you literally just go in and everywhere that you want motion blur, you paint with the white brush in this white box right here. So for instance, if I wanna bring it back, you can see his face just gets a little bit more blurry. And if I undo that, he returns back to normal. Same thing if I, I'm gonna turn my flow to make it a little bit more clear. If I want to get rid of my motion blur right here, I just paint over that. And you can see in this box, you can see exactly where you painted. Um, that's a great way of just controlling where your effect is applied to. And also making sure that the face isn't completely destroyed and looks super blurry and out of focus. And then the last effect I added to this design is an inner glow. And I just find that when you add an inner glow to a cutout, it really adds a nice polished look to it. So that's before and that's after. And it's a super simple effect to do. You just double click on your layer to bring up your dialog box and then choose inner glow. And here are my specific settings I use for my inner glow. Most people just go through and choose normal, but then you just get like a faded white line and it just kind of looks a little bit milky. I usually use vivid light. And what vivid light does is when you choose a vivid light inner glow with white, it takes all the colors underneath and it naturally lifts those colors versus just applying a white overlay to it. So you'll find that like around the arms and things like that, instead of being just a white line, you actually get natural light effects to the different parts of the cutout, which I think is really nice. It makes it look like it's almost shot in a studio. So if you have a cutout where the photo itself isn't that great or the scene isn't that great, just adding a simple inner glow like this is a great way of adding a little bit of an elevated feel to your cutout. And I, I just set my opacity to 17 and my size to 81 for that. And that's my inner glow. Now moving up, I was at this point and I said, I think I need to blend Clay Thompson into this image a little bit better. So I just added a little bit of brightness. I created a clipping mask um, with my brightness adjustment layer and I just added five brightness. Nothing super complicated with that. And then going through, I was like, well, the colors in this image don't necessarily mesh super well. You can see some of the yellows and the blues and I don't know. I just wanted to find a way to blend in my colors to make it feel a little bit more cohesive. So I used a gradient map. And what a gradient map does is it takes your 
highlights, midtones, and shadows, and then it applies an overall filter. Think of it kind of like an Instagram filter to your image. And then, so for instance, I just use this built-in blue selenium one um, Photoshop gradient map. And if you wanna play around with gradient maps on your Photoshop, that's completely cool. Just go up here to your adjustments tab and hit gradient map, and then click on this dialog box and then you might only have a few basic ones at the beginning. Don't worry at all. Just go to this and hit import gradients. Nope, that's not what you want. Oh, actually you just scroll down and you have the, the full access to all of the gradients. So that's super helpful. It's been a little bit since I've opened this dialog box in this new version of Photoshop. But all you do is just select one. So I just selected this black to blue simple gradient and then I applied it to the image and you'll notice when it's all the way turned up like this it doesn't look that great. Now gradient maps are best for kind of a subtle effect to bring in your colors to make them feel more cohesive. So I just did it about right there. Just a little subtle effect you can see it takes some of the oranges out of my image and makes it a little bit more cyan. I think I had it at 16. And that's what I did for that layer. I then added in a levels adjustment. And what levels does is it allows us to play with like the dark parts, midtones, and white parts of our image. So you can see in his hair and in some of the jersey and in the background, I literally just took everything and made it a little bit darker. So I just took my midtone and dragged it to the right. So it initially it was like right here, and I just dragged it to the right a little bit to add a little bit more, I guess, contrast, but in a way that applies it to all of my images at once. I then added a curves adjustment layer. So in my last image, I just made everything kind of dark, and with my curves adjustment layer, you can see I made everything a little bit lighter again. But that was with intention. So I wanted to make sure everything had the same kind of contrast and same like dark points and light points by using my levels tool. And then with my curves tool, I was able to then use it as more of a adding an effect to it. So I added my curves tool and this is what my curves graph looks like if you want to replicate it. So on your left here is the dark point on your curves tool and up here is the white point. So here if you drag this up, everywhere that's black gets lighter. And if you drag it down, everywhere that's black gets darker. So this is kind of what I ended up with. Same thing with the top right. If you draw, move this down, your white points on your image get a little bit darker. And so there's tons of ways to play around with curves and you can do it even by individual colors if you want to. But I find just having like a simple upward sweeping curve like this is a nice effect. The next thing I did was add a light leak. Now that was one of the main things from the original image that was sent to me on Instagram. Um, and that's super easy to do as well. So I just went through and I found a light leak. Um, and this is what it looks like. If you wanna find a light leak for yourself, you can go to places like Creative Market to find those light leaks, but you can also go to those websites like Pexels and Unsplash and just search light leak. And there's probably tons of free options that you can use. So there's always a great free, that's always a great free resource you can use when creating your designs. And all I did is I took this and I dragged this into my document and I'm just gonna change my blending mode back to normal. And so I just had it positioned like this. Nothing super complicated. And so what I did is whenever you have like a light leak or a, a flare or whatever effect, there's all these different blending modes that you can use but I find the best one is always linear dodge add. And I'll tell you why. So if you were to just set it to a screen, it just kind of looks a little bit washed out. So for those of you that don't know, if you set a blending mode to multiply, it gets rid of all the white and light parts of your image. 
if you set your blending mode to screen, it gets rid of all the dark parts of your image. So you might be enticed to just put it on screen for something like this. But I find that if you put it on linear dodge add, the way the colors interact with the background, it just makes it feel a little bit more natural. Ultimately, it depends on what your opinion is, and if you think that screen looks better, then go for it. But I find that linear dodge add is actually a really nice way of adding light leaks and flares. Now I just changed the fill on that to 72. Now you might be thinking, well, can you just change the opacity? No. So if you set the fill back to 100, if you were to adjust the opacity, you can see it gets washed out kind of really quickly. Where if you change the fill, it keeps the color profile a little bit more preserved as you decrease the fill. The next thing I did was add this dust and scratches texture layer right here. And I just found this right here. Again, nothing super complicated. I just found it from um, like Pexels or Unsplash or a free website like that. You can just type in dust texture and see what comes up. And I dragged it onto my image and what I noticed was there wasn't a whole lot of contrast. So what I ended up doing is just adding a levels adjustment tool. And again, levels allows us to adjust the dark points and the light points. So you can see here in this image, it looks like all of these colors aren't truly white. They're actually more of a gray. So by using levels, we're able to then change those values to white so that when we change our blend mode to screen, they show up more on our original document. So you can see I took everything and just dragged it to the left to make sure that our texture kind of pieces on the um, texture layer showed up a little bit better. The other thing I did is I got to this point and I noticed that our image was looking pretty orangey still with all of the um, lens flare and all of that stuff. So I just added a color balance tool or a color balance button uh, adjustment layer to kind of level out the colors and make it feel less orangey. And you can see all I did is this if you want to follow along and do that exact same thing at home. From there, I added my text. So just Clay Thompson. Now, that's super easy to do. You just type T and then type Clay, and then tap T again and type Thompson. And for this font I used, um, it's actually the Nike font that they use. It's called Futura Extra Condensed Bold. Um, and then the other font is just Futura Condensed Bold not the, or can, Futura condensed medium, not the extra bold. Um, and that's all I did for that. Nothing super complicated there. I then went, then went through and tweaked my brightness just a little bit more by adding 20 to that, just to give it a little bit more of a lighter effect. And then I added a, another gradient map to my image. And for that gradient map, I chose this very colorful gradient map. And all I did is I turned my fill layer down super low to create this effect. And that's it. That's all I did to recreate this design in Adobe Photoshop. I'll link the link to the Unsplash and Pexels pages down in the description. Um, so you guys have access to those if you're looking for free resources to create your own design similar to this. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. I'd love to answer them. Or if you have any like designs that you want to see me recreate, just like that Instagram follower, just follow us on Instagram. I'll put it on the screen so you can see it. Um, and just shoot us a DM with the graphic that you want to know how to recreate. Make sure you like this video if you've learned anything at all. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss out on future tutorials from Sports Design School. But that's all for us today. Have a great day.